Q&A box. Um, so uh, welcome everyone, thank you for joining us and welcome Pat. Pat, as you know, is our National Diabetes Coordinator and one of the key people behind Lap the Map for Diabetes. So I'll hand straight over to you. Thank you very much, Rob, and thank you everybody for attending today. I'm sure a lot of you have done uh, Lap the Map or have participated in Lap the Map, but if you haven't, this is a this is a great opportunity to learn a bit more about what, what it's all about and why we do it. So the, the idea for Lap the Map is to encourage people to exercise and of course have, have a healthy and a, a healthy diet. So what we ask people to do is to culminate this on November the 14th, which is World Diabetes Day. Now, World Diabetes Day this year is on a Monday, so maybe you could culminate it on the, uh, the weekend prior to that. So what you can do is have kids in uh, families pushing their, their, their kids around. They, everybody can ride, a, people can ride a bike, people can walk. I've had people um, actually doing, um, working on a treadmill at the gym and sometimes the gyms will, will cooperate with you and you can get see how many kilometres you can do in a gym. That's another thing that you can do. Um, in Tasmania, I have a group that sometimes um, are counting their kilometres as they canoe or as they climb mountains as well. Um, there's all sorts of things you can do. Of course, when you do this, you can walk, you can run, you can have a barbecue, um, I've had, have had people say to me, you know, okay, we have a sausage sizzle, that's not quite good for healthy eating, but um, let's have a sausage sizzle, I don't think that really matters at all, but maybe you could have some calories, carrot and celery sticks available for people as well, but just make sure you have plenty of water and all of that sort of thing. Now, um, I'm sure uh, a lot of you should have received by now the uh, Lap the Map Manual, so there are a lot of things that are covered in that lap the map manual that are really, really important. Um, and one of the things that you can get on your day, to have on your day, is a uh, OSD risk form, which is a form that can be filled out and people can see their risk for developing diabetes with that. But if they have a high count on that, what, that, what you do is send them off to their GP and their GP can assess them from that. Um, then we've also got all sorts of, um, thank you, Rob. Then we've got all sorts of <coughs> um, contacts that you can have for, for all of those, for the people in each, each particular state that you can get in, get in contact with. So if you keep scrolling for me for, me for a bit, Rob, please, uh, keep going. Uh, I want to get down to about page four. So the, the operational guidelines is what we've got. And there's, there's all the contacts there that are all there for everybody and they are up-to-date contacts for everybody. So if you'd like to contact those diabetes centres in your particular state, that's what you need to do. And then what we've got there is um, some displays, what you can do, maybe what you can do when you have your day. Um, keep going, please, Rob. Um, pro yeah, promote and promote and promote. And then there's guidelines for diabetes testing. So please always have make sure that you have diabetes educators who are doing the testing. And please be aware, which I sure, I'm sure you all are, that, that, that lions are here for diabetes awareness. We're not here to edu educate, but we're here to help people. But we do that in consultation with diabetes educators and endocrinologists and people who can help us. And maybe sometimes GPs are more than happy to come out and help you with this sort of thing as well. So there you can find, a, it says, shows you there where you can find a, a certified diabetes educator if you go onto that, that email there. Um, and then that's, that's an in, uh, it forms a release and indemnity that um, David Skinner, our legal officer, has done for us. So you can have a look through that as, as well. And we've got to be really, really careful and watch what we're doing when we're having these sort of things. And I think and that those are forms of release that you need to get people to sign who participate in that. And that says November 21, it should say November 22. But never mind, we can fix that up. That one was missed, unfortunately. Never mind. So this one here is a, uh, a template of for when, when you've completed for your, for your own benefit for your clubs for when you can, and you can see there what you can do and, and the information that you need to put in there sometimes. And then uh, risk management, you've got to look at all of those things as well. Please be sure that you make, it, make sure that it's safe for everybody. Um, I did have one, um, one area who did ask me if they could walk along the footpath. The footpath has got 
um, tree roots on it. No, you can't do that. Just please be careful and be, be very much aware of where, where you're going holding your event. And that's this one here is just a self-inspection checklist. Just make sure that this covers everything. So um, some of it is not necessary, but a lot of it is. So be very, very careful what you do and how you do it. And be aware that we have to take care. We've got to be very careful and watch the safety of everybody. Thank you, Rob. It's quite extensive there, that one. And then there's an event planner. Now you can do it, you can use this or not, um, but this gives you a bit of an idea of what you can and can do, what you can do. Um, one, one of the big things I think and, and what we want to, would like to do this year is make sure that we get lots of um, photos, videos, um, put in some reports and even if you send them to the PR, PR guys in uh, Newcastle, um, make sure you get them put on Facebook, let everybody know what we're doing. Um, there is a poster that we have uh, that you can use and that has been sent out. If you haven't received that, please let me know and I can send that out to you or otherwise I can actually resend it out to everybody if that's what you wish. That, if I could just add to, uh, with, with respect to um, just going back to this risk assessment, um, yep. what David Skinner always mentions when we talk about a risk assessment, um, you obviously have to do the risk assessment, but then he said it's very important after you've done it to meet with, with either your whole club or to meet with a subcommittee of your club to go through that risk assessment and to work out how you're going to respond. So uh, he just says, be cautious. It's not enough to fill it, simply complete it. You need to sit down there and, and respond to it. And if you do that, um, your, your club's risk is significantly uh, reduced. Mm. Yeah, it's very, very important. And that's why we've made sure we've got some information from David there. That's because it's really, really important that we cover all these things. And also check the insurance cover for the day. And that's another thing to make sure about that as well. And here's a, a this is a post event for your for your club use. Just make sure that just go over it. This is just a bit of a debrief for your club, of course. And I think that's a very important thing to do as well. I think that um, we all need to just check and make sure that what we've done. And this one here is a post activity report. Now, what what this this is what I've had in it this this up up until this year. So what we what we would like to do this year though is uh, use the survey monkey at the and let get people to um, put their information on survey monkey. So what that one we're going to be changing that to this year a little bit. So when you um, report, we'd like you to do it with the survey monkey that we've set up, um, and that will be forwarded to you as well. Um, but what, what you can do in the meantime, I have developed a form that you can do in the meantime and you can, you can calculate all the kilometres that you've got. And that's a new form that I've done up and I will be sending that out to everybody so that you can keep an eye on how many kilometres you've been doing. So that's what we can do. Okay. Pat, would you just like me to take people through the survey? Um, yes, please. Point in time? Look, yes. Um, just, just in terms of um, the distance recording, what... It's really important for us is to be able to promote um, the success of Lap the Map to the community. Yeah, uh, Ross has asked for a link to the manual, um, Pat, and we we'll, can send it out to everyone afterwards. Yeah. The, um, yeah, so we've been very keen to promote Lap the Map. We think it's a really good story, uh, particularly because it's, uh, it's health focused and because it's national, um, because Lions have been very, very active in it. The real challenge for us is to get timely information though. Um, and in past years, Lap the Map, it's taken weeks and weeks after the event to get that magic number of how many kilometres were walked. Now, by that time, um, it's no longer a newsworthy story because the news wants to know the week, well, they really want to know the weekend that most people are doing it. I am aware that people do it at different times as well, but the, the actual weekend of Lap the Map, they'd like to know what the target is and they would like to know whether we've achieved that target. And as soon as we can get that information uh, as close to the event as possible, the more likely uh, success we have. Our, our PR team has actually had lots of offers to promote it, but we haven't been able to give them that number. So what we would like people to do is to use an online survey for this. Um, and I'll share the screen, but bear in mind, this is a PDF of the online survey. We don't want people filling in surveys longhand. Uh, we want people to uh, click on the link and complete a simple survey as soon as they have done their walk for lap the mat for diabetes. 
and that, that'll help us to report on it really, really quickly. And it also makes it simple for you. So the link will appear in the information. Just quickly, when you go in there, this will be the first field. Um, put the date of your walk in, or if you did multiple walks, put the last date in um, there. And bear in mind that if you don't put a date in, you can't go through to the subsequent screen. So you'll get a nag saying you need to fill this in. What was the distance walked in kilometres? And you can either use the slider here to slide it along to wherever it needs to be, or just type the number in the end there. Now, I've, we have limited it to 10,000, um, and I'm assuming that no group would have walked more than 10,000 kilometres, but um, if they do, they have to let us know because we have to open up that field. Uh, the, the suburb of town for your walk, this is for reporting afterwards. Did you raise funds? Uh, it's not obligatory to raise funds. Some groups do, and then they'd like to report it. If you say yes, you come to another screen. If you say no, you move on. So if you said yes to raise funds, uh, you'll be asked to put in how much you raised in, in, in terms of a number um, and then move on to the next question, which is, uh, are you a Lions Club member, your district if you know it, your state if you know it, hopefully, your club name and the names of the person entering the data uh, that just helps us if there's a, something odd about the data, we can ring them up and say uh, what went wrong there. Now, I think I've been asked whether or not we can actually put in um, report against club names. And I'll have to have a look at that tomorrow. I don't have access to the software uh, today. Um, so it's a pretty simple survey. should take less than a minute to complete. And it really helps us out because then we can provide Pat with the reports to allow her to report on... Uh, on the results. Um, Pat, we have a question from Brett. Uh, did you send posters to the clubs or to a district officer? Can you show the poster on the screen for future identification? Yeah, I have, I have sent it out to um, GST and diabetes coordinators, but I can send it out again. That's not a, absolutely not a problem. But there yeah, is a poster that, that you can um, actually alter for each district and you can put on you know, if you can identify it for yourself. Yeah, I don't, I don't have, a, I do have a copy of the poster here, I guess, um, that you sent to me. I'll put that on the screen as it's been Thank asked. You. Thank you. So, so that, there, there's, that's yeah. the poster, it's... Yes, and it can be changed. You can put your own details down. There's an area on the bottom there where there's plenty of information there where you can we can put put your own information in there. But if, if you would like, I can send that out again. That's absolutely no problem. I can send that to individuals if you wish, or I can send it to um, a diabetes coordinators. But if there's individuals who would like to, to receive it, could you just please pop me an email and I will absolutely do that immediately. A couple of other questions, Pat, while we're, while we're here. Um, Lorraine asks, we have a consortium of four clubs in South Canberra. How do we suitably report that? We need all clubs to be represented as a tally of kilometres um, and any funds raised. So I think what Lorraine is asking is if you're walking with four clubs, which is the club name that goes into it? Um, well, that, well, that's something I think that, that I have, we, we, I'd like to have a look at maybe. Um, I think at one stage, some people were doing it by zones, some areas do it by zones, but if you want to do it by individual clubs, I think that that's something that we can look into maybe and mm. um, have a look at that, Rob, and have a look at that. I, I, th I think what Lorraine's comment is, if I, if I have it right, is that um, if, you, if you have four clubs walk, walking together mm. um, and, and they with a joint set of kilometres, do you put, which club name do you put in yeah. there? Yeah. And then how do the other clubs get advice of those kilometres? So. Yeah, that's right. And, and, that's, and that's one of the things that, you know, when I've done it previously, I've had my own um, database and I've had up to 80 or 90 um, club names. It would be great to be able to have the club names of those who have participated. But on the survey monkey, what we're looking for is actually the kilometres and, and all mm. of that sort of thing. But if people, if club, if you would like to send me individual um, listings, I'm more than happy to take them on board because I think it's really, really important to know exactly how many clubs are participating. And of course, we really want to know how many people are participating as well, because I think that that's really, really important as well. 
Well, I, I could if it solves some of the problem. We yeah. could amend the survey to say um, to report the um, the club and and say what, which other clubs participated as well, yeah. and yeah. give them the opportunity to list. Just now, know, it'd be great if we could have num club. numbers of participants because I think that's it lets everybody know, and I think that's one of the things that I gathered. Up previous years, I've always gathered the numbers of participants, and it really right, is numbers of wonderful. Numbers of walkers. Mm. Yes, it is really is wonderful to see the increase of people who are walking. You know, particularly out of COVID now. Hopefully, we'll be getting more more people walking. All right. Look, uh, let's let's do some refining of that survey tomorrow. Yeah. We can look at the um, article yeah. report on numbers of uh, yeah. individuals walking, and yeah. maybe to be able to list more than one club as a participant so that you'll have a record of, of all yeah. of the clubs. So That'd be good. That'd be good. Yeah. And, and, I th and I think, you know, while we're on this, you know, I know that a lot of a lot of reporting wasn't done. I know there are people who participated and clubs that, that participated. We just didn't get the information. So I'm hoping that we get more information, more accurate information. And I think, but I think Lions are well aware of that reporting these days. And I think we've, we've all changed the way we report these days. So hopefully that will be reflected this year with this. No worries. I just see, see there's some comments in um, to send the information to cabinet secretaries. Okay. Um, and um, Leslie Crompton has listed the email address for the information. So I'll pass that on to you afterwards. Okay. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll send it out to Cab Six and and um, just Cab Six and Diabetes and GST and um, Diabetes as well. So that'll be fine. So Sue asks, um, confirming the kilometres are from the thirteenth and or the fourteenth of November to twenty two, or is the club still reporting lap the map monthly? And I think Pat, am I right? The answer is it's however you'd like to do it. Um, some clubs might be walking, you know, over many, many months. Yes, that's right. Um, that's right. Some some clubs start doing it in um, July. Hmm. Some clubs, clubs start collecting their kilometres in July, and I think that's absolutely sensational. Um, I, and it's really up to you as to what you do and how, how often you do it. And um, but just please report it. <laughs> I think that that's that's the the thing that we want. We want people to understand that you know let's get out there and walk. And I think really a lot of the times we we all do a lot of walking anyway. Um, but sometimes we forget to say, oh heavens, I could put that in into the lap of the map kilometres. You know, it, so I'm sure that there are a lot of people who walk that just forget to um, say maybe add that in as well. I wonder if we can set up um, in my lion a signature activity for lap the map that um, every club can um, report on as part of their activity reporting. I, I know you can set up a club uh, signature um, activity. I'm wondering if you can do it more generally. Again, that's something else to look at. That would uh, be Danny, mentioned, that would be Danny mentioned last year he arranged a virtual walk. Is it okay to do this year? Absolutely, and that's what Box Hill will be doing again this year as well. My club will be doing that again this year. The virtual walks, I think, are absolutely sensational. And if, if we can just, it, as, as the virtual walks are happening, um, I think if we can just keep up with them, you know, at, at our local Box Hill Club, we actually walked from Melbourne through to, I think we worked it out, to the Gulf of Carpentaria. Um, so it's just a, a matter of uh, adding the kilometres up and you'd be surprised as to how many um everybody is doing you know I know mine were last year were rehab walking and unfortunately again it's rehab walking for me again this year but um but it, it's amazing how many kilometers that you can um get going by doing all of that and and the guys in um South Australia in C1 and C2 C1 I think it is they do a wonderful job and going from club to club and uh and they go visiting and they do all their kilometres that way. And they do, they call these strides, which is what the LCI calls it. And they do strides. And I think it's absolutely wonderful. And I think we can include all of that into all of the kilometres that we do. So Marianne asks, uh, who do you want the monthly report to go to as our club do it all the time? Who do we want it to go to? Yeah, yeah. So who, 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 who do they send that report to? 
Well, if they want to do a monthly club report, if they would mm -hmm. like to send that to me, if they wanted to send that to me, that's fine. But mm -hmm. we also want the um, we want the survey monkey done as well. Um, but if you wanted to, you can you can just send that to me if you wish. And at the at the end, keep a tally of yourself. And at the end, put, do the the end tally on that last weekend, that weekend before the November fourteen. So the the primary reason for um the survey uh, report is about promotion. Yes. Um, you know, obviously Pat is interested in, um, you know, getting quantifiable information for her own needs and for the program and to, and to report on the program. But we are also interested in, so it's the magic number. We can say that the Lions of Australia walked around Australia a dozen times as part of the lap, the, lap, the map for diabetes. Mm. That's the big brag. And then obviously we can talk about some more details about some of the, the uh, local activities. Hmm. Um, the way our, our media for the works, we'll, we put together a media release for these things. Our media team tends to contact uh, various um, services to see if we can't get it on the agenda. If they then make an approach, we obviously then need the stats very quickly. And the final thing we need then is local spokespeople because often they'll say, okay, so you walked around Australia a dozen times, can I talk to a club in uh, New South Wales or in Queensland that was involved so I can get that personal approach? Hmm. So they're the sorts of things that we look for. Yeah, ab absolutely. And I think the more um, that we do this sort of thing, the more that we get this out and the more that we get people to understand that this is what we're doing, I think that's when people can see that lions are out there doing other th things other than the usual um sausages and all of that sort of thing. You know, we want to get away from that, don't we? we this is what this is all about. And then even up at Anzi, um, John, um, he, John is arranging to have a walk at Anzi. So um, we've got a, John is getting us, uh, some core flute done and we're going to go for a walk at, up in um, Cairns while Anzi's on as well. So people can see that we're walking, everybody's walking and, and combining and getting ready to do that all together. So I, I, you know, I, I just encourage everybody to do this um, and participate. And, and let's um, just see. Last year we uh, lapped Australia. I think it was seven and a half times. So it was absolutely wonderful. The first year we did it, we did we did fourteen thousand kilometres, and last year we did around about three hundred thousand. So you know, I think that it's it's absolutely sensational what clubs and individuals are doing um, regarding this. And I think people are becoming more and more aware of the importance of it. Uh, people have asked for your, Pat, your email address, Pat. Yep. Um, Pat's in the directory, but I have popped her email address in the chat box. Mm. So you should see that pop up on your screen. Yeah. That's fine. That's, I'll, I'll answer everybody. That's absolutely not a problem. Mm. And, There's a couple of comments here. So um, uh, Danny mentions that they walk from Sydney to Broome involving five districts. Um, and Chris says that in 2021, the N2 zone chair, Lorraine, was interviewed by the ABC regarding Lap the Map. Good. Um, uh, Neil asks, why the indemnity form is when we're walking on council or public paths covered by Lions Insurance? It, it, basically, you're, if you're organising an activity, it doesn't really matter where it, the activity is, you bear some responsibility. Um, obviously, what happens if um, if there is an accident or an incident, then uh, the lawyers will come out and decide who they want to make responsible for that. So it's um, the organiser needs to do a risk assessment. Um, obviously, then let's let's say someone trips on a council um, public path, um, then they'll look into well, was the path defective? Was it was it an issue associated with the construction or the management of that park, or was it an issue associated with the organisers of the walk, you know, and for example, I think I'm in, even in your manual, Pat, it's, um, and you mentioned, if you have your route for the walk going through some unsafe ground, um, then it is your responsibility. So I mean, that's really why you do a risk assessment and you, you fill in the form. So uh, it helps you guide you through the process. And I, and I think that's the important thing, Rob, what you just said. It, it's a guide. It's a, to guide you through the process and to ensure that hopefully that you've obviated things that might happen because you can't prevent everything. We know that. Um, but if you can put things in place to ensure that, hopefully ensure that these things won't happen. But just be, be aware that, you know, if, if you've got a long route, you know, make sure you have people 
dotted along the route too to make sure that people are all okay. And I think that you, you don't have to have 100 people, but you can have maybe people running from one path to the other. I don't know. But, you know, I think we, I think we, we are all aware of about safety and I think that's a really, really important thing to be aware of. So one of the other things that I was going to mention as well is um, if you do happen to raise money um, for uh, with Lap the Map, there are several way, several places you can um, deposit, you can donate the money. You can either donate it to the, the Australian Lions um, Diabetes Foundation or you can um, donate to um, the LCIF for their diabetes or... or, or um, you can retain it in your district. I'm sure your, most of your districts or all your districts have got a diabetes, diabetes um, line in their books where you can put the money into that. And so when you do have a diabetes awareness um, session or a forum or something I know up in Q3, they're having some forums this year. And I think if you are able to raise money, say with Lap the Map, it's all about awareness and letting everybody know what's happening. And of course, the other thing is um, if, if your district are having camps, maybe you can um, use some of that money for your district um, type one um, camps that we'll be having in most, in several districts next year. We're having one in Queensland, one in, um, we've got one in Victoria coming up quite soon. You've got another one in Western Australia. And there's a couple of other districts that are interested in having um, diabetes camps soon. So that's something that if you, uh, depends on where you would like to place that money if you do raise money. But, um, you know, I just thank, thank you all for um, listening. And um, if, if there's any more questions, Robert, or any more questions there that we have an answer? Uh, I think I've picked them, picked them all up. Uh, okay. Just having a quick, yes, no, I think, I think we're good. Yep. So if, if, if there are questions, um, if, if Rob has put up my email, I'm more than happy to answer any emails. Um, and now that I'm getting back into gear, I, I, I'm in having rehab for a second knee reconstruction, second knee replacement, not reconstruction, replacement. So I'm getting back into gear again now. So um, thank you very much for attending today. Um, and it's been wonderful to actually talk to everybody. And thank you so much for all of the questions as well. I think it's, I'm really, really pleased that everybody's asking and loads and loads of questions and I think it's absolutely wonderful but if you need any help or any assistance please do not hesitate to contact me. Thanks very much Pat. Um, thanks very much everyone. Uh, I will tomorrow put the recording of this on the YouTube channel, the Lions Australia YouTube channel under Club Resources playlist um, but I'll circulate that to Pat if anyone would like to uh, have a look at this afterwards. Yes, if you circulate that to me, Rob, I can send it out and um, because I'm sure there are, I know there are some people who would like to send it out to some club members who couldn't come. I know this is a three o'clock, we've done this in the afternoon um, and people who are working can't come. So um, this is wonderful, it's been recorded. So thank you. There's more no questions. Is there more questions there, Rob, or are they just... Oh, uh, uh, YouTube channel question mark. The um, Lions Australia YouTube channel um, has got lots of good resources on it. Um, and I don't remember the URL. I was a, um, but I'll quickly look it up and pop it in the chat box. Uh, go to YouTube and type Lions Australia in the search bar, you'll find it. Um, but, and I'll find the exact playlist that it will appear in. Uh, okay. Why should you use Miro? Wouldn't you want a whiteboard? No one sees it. Why do we have ads on that? <laughs> it's crazy. And just bear with me for a second to get the... Um, the URL copy link address, just make sure this works. It takes you to the child's so policy training. Uh, nothing's easy. Um, anyway.
this is the YouTube channel name and you should then see it, um, a, a playlist called Club Resources, but I can send Pat the link at such a time as we, um, as I get it on there, which will be tomorrow sometime. That's all right, Brett, no need to apologise. No, uh, the more people that know about our YouTube channel, the better. Um, you might yeah. find some things there that you like. <laughs> Yeah, but it's good to have these questions and I actually think it's good to have these sort, sort of sessions where we, you know, we don't know what we don't know and I think we, this, this is where we can find things out. And I think it's absolutely sensational and I really appreciate your time, Robin, because I know you're busy, though. Not a problem at all. Very happy to be here. All right, everyone, have a great evening. Thank you.